Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this ruined church. I built this model back in May. If you want to watch that video first, you can do so by clicking on the video you see in the upper right of the screen. Another relevant video is this one on the left, in which I tested artists acrylic paints, which I will be using in this video. Mostly the fluid matte acrylics from Joe Sonia. It is of course a sensible choice to use mostly cheap artists acrylics on a model like this, rather than model paints. Unless you're rich, I guess. I am not. So cheap artist acrylics it is. My intention with this is to paint the model fairly quickly using some simple steps, but still have it look nicely detailed. So let's get to painting. First I'll use brown earth as a base colour for any of the ground areas outside the building. This doesn't really have to be neat at all, so don't worry too much about getting it on any of the stonework. It's also okay if you get some brush strokes or slight inconsistencies in the coverage, as it will mostly be covered by grass later. In fact, inconsistencies might help to create a more realistic dirt appearance. I did put some of this around the edge of the inside of the church. I'm not really sure why I did that, it shouldn't really be there. Maybe we can say it's near the other wall and dirt has been thrown inside the church or something like that. It's not really a big deal. The next colour I applied is Indian Red Oxide to the floor tiles. When this was in the tube I thought it would be very similar to the earth brown, but after applying it I discovered it was quite a bit different. I am pleased by this. I have no idea if it's realistic or not to have an old stone church with stone floors in a radically different colour than the walls, but I don't really care that much. I just wanted to have some different colours on the floor and walls to add some contrast and interest. Again, I'm not too worried about keeping this colour separate from the rubble piles. They will be painted after this of course, but a little bit of red or brown on them can't really hurt. It would reflect broken chunks of stone floor amongst the piles. And a variety of colour in the rubble should make it look better. Next, as you might have guessed, I paint the walls and rubble. I wanted to do this in a darker grey than I had, so I added a small amount of carbon black to the quite light Nimbus grey. I wasn't too worried about the exact shade of this, so I didn't measure exactly how much of each colour I used. For this kind of thing I think eyeballing it is good enough. If you do something like this and you want to be certain your colour remains consistent, I would suggest mixing a large batch. I didn't, but I think the slight difference in colour around the model will add to it rather than detract. Being a smart man, I neglected to film myself painting the majority of the stone walls, but you can see I did do that. I painted the large areas with a large brush, and then I cut into the edges and such with a smaller brush, which I think makes sense. You can see it looks alright, but it is a bit rough. There are some small spots of black primer still visible and some of the grey is on both the brown and red, but that's fine. Next I take some Nimbus grey, this time with no black mixed in, and very roughly dry brush it onto the grey areas. This should be focused on the edges and slightly raised pieces, and this model certainly has plenty of those. Other than trying to avoid getting the floor tiles, there's no need to be particularly careful where this goes. I think this makes the grey areas look much better without a whole lot of effort. Dry brushing is a great technique for this kind of thing, especially large areas. It would be painful to try brush painting the edges of everything. Then I figured it was time for a wash. I just sort of slosh this all over the model, not too worried about any kind of neatness here. Instead of using what would probably be an entire bottle's worth of model specific wash, I made one using the artist's acrylic paint. This is a mix of carbon black with a lot of water. I'm not entirely sure how much water and paint I mixed together exactly, but it was a lot. Just keep adding water slowly until you feel like it's thin enough to be used as a wash. It turned out a little darker than I really would have liked, but that's okay. I am going to apply more dry brushing after this step, and I do want it to look as though it has been burned out, so this should help with that. I then reapply the dry brushing of Nimbus Grey. It may seem like a bit of a waste doing this twice, and you could do it just once if you want, but I feel it adds more variation to the colouring. I had actually intended to do this dry brushing quite a bit lighter than the previous one, but I didn't. I think it worked out pretty well anyway. You can see I've managed to catch the edges of a lot of the large stones with the dry brush, and it creates a nice contrast with the darkness from the wash in the gaps. Next I pondered what to do with the floor. I think it kind of looks good as is, but it could do with a little highlighting. So it's time for dry brushing again. This is a good opportunity to try and cover some grey that has accidentally found its way onto the floor. As with all the other steps I'm not super concerned about neatness, but I am definitely trying to avoid the grey areas. I use the same Indian red oxide I originally painted the floors with and lightly dry brush it around the cracks. It's kind of subtle, but I think it's an improvement and it does help the floor stand out just that little bit more. Next I got out the airbrush and attempted to apply some soot marks to the upper edges of the walls, mostly around the window and door. 
For this I used a very, very thin mix of carbon black and water. I think this might have been even more thin than the mix I used as the wash. Unsurprisingly, because of that it went on very thin. So I had to do quite a few layers of this, but I think that adds to the effect. I had initially planned to do a lot more airbrushing on this project. After all, it was a large reason for my testing artist acrylics through the airbrush a couple of weeks ago. However, I figured it wasn't really necessary, and I decided to see what I could do just by using a brush and some simple techniques. Applying this soot effect is about the most advanced part of this project. It does look a little less burnt and sooty than I had initially thought it would, but in my mind it kind of looks like maybe it's been sitting in the rain for a while and a lot of the soot and ash has blown away on the wind. Next I figured I might try adding a brown wash to the rubble. I made this with the brown earth acrylic paint again mixed with a lot of water, even more than I used in the black wash. I apply this to the piles of rubble very roughly, and I wasn't too worried if I got this on the floor or walls. I think it's worked pretty well. It's kind of subtle, but that's what I was going for. If you look close enough it kind of looks like there is a small amount of dust or dirt amongst the rocks. At this stage I wasn't sure if I wanted to do anything more, so I left it for a couple of days looking at it occasionally just in case something really cool came to mind. I think this is a good idea if you're not in a rush to get something done. Just leave it sit for a bit and take your time to decide if the work is done or if it needs any further changes. In this case I decided that what I had at this stage was fine for paint and it was time to move on to the grass. I apply straight PVA glue to the areas I want to be covered in grass and spread it out with a cheap brush. I was being careful to avoid getting the glue onto the walls and rock chunks, but you can see I did still get some on there. It was at this point that I learned my static grass applicator had stopped working. As you can imagine, this was very frustrating. Rather than wait until I could order a new applicator, I decided to apply the grass anyway. Just the method I used was a bit less than ideal. I still sprinkled some grass from the applicator for the first application. After all, it was still in the cup. The difference is that there's no static field to make the grass stand on end. After a while I turn the model upside down and tap the bottom in an attempt to get the grass to stand up. While the glue is still wet I dump more grass on and then repeat the upside down tapping thing. I did these steps a few times, and it was a bit of a pain in the ass. It does work, but a functioning static grass applicator would produce better looking results. Anyway, I've ended up with grass that is mostly standing up. It is a little bit thin, but it could certainly be worse. Unfortunately, the PVA glue does leave a shiny finish under the grass, which looks like garbage. Unless maybe you want to make it look like it has been raining. I don't. Because this was some grass I wasn't super pleased with, I wasn't too worried about potentially ruining it. So I figured I would try applying a mixture of matte varnish thinned with water with a syringe. The mix was about 60% water and 40% matte varnish. Using a brush to spread this around would just remove the grass, which would obviously be counterproductive. So I tried using the water's liquid properties to simply tilt the model and allow the mixture to just flow all around. I wasn't sure if this would work as I had hoped, but it kind of did. The excessive glossiness is gone but there are now some chunks of white in the grass. I'm not entirely sure why this happened. It may be that I didn't mix the varnish mixture well enough or applied it too thick. Either way, I figured I would try to deal with this with a wash. I'm not really sure if it counts as a wash if I apply it fairly lightly with an airbrush, but that's what I did. I used a fairly low pressure and sprayed a mix of 50% army painter strong tone and 50% water. I focused this mostly on the white chunks, but also sprayed it randomly around the grass. It was not quite as effective as I'd hoped it would be, so I tried again with undiluted army painter dark tone, and this seemed to work a little better. Doing this added a good bit of colour variation to the grass. The grass I used was already a blend of a few different colours, but it was a bit on the bright side. Now it has subtle patches of brownie colours through it, and I think that's about as far as I want to go with this model. I could easily keep going and add more detail with my painting, but to be honest I think it looks fine as it is. I think it will work very well on the tabletop, and that's exactly what I built this for. Gaming terrain doesn't need to be complicated at all to look good, and I think I could very easily go over the top and make it look bad. I'm pretty happy with the result I've got here. Of course it's not going to win any competitions, but I think it's a pretty good demonstration of what you can do in a relatively short amount of time with a few simple colours of artist acrylic paints, and I suppose a couple of modelling specific washes if you're counting what I did with the grass. 
The entirety of this model itself is painted using only four artist's acrylic paints. When I built this, I had intentions of using my airbrush to do the majority of painting on this model, but it just didn't work out that way, mostly because I was so pleased with how the first layer of brown earth looked. So I decided to see how good a job I could do while still keeping things relatively simple. I think anyone could replicate what I have done here quite easily. All I really did with this painting wise was brush base coats on, dry brush, add washes and do a little bit of airbrushing. If you don't have an airbrush you could still get similar looking results without it. I'm not sure how relevant it is, but I'm still going to include a list of the colours I used in the description below. You might not be able to find exact matches in your area. I guess this is a problem with artists acrylics, but I'm sure the names of the colours are fairly consistent across brands. So you should be able to get something close if you want to. Of course you can use any colours you want on your own models. So that's about it. What do you think? If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, I'm sure you know where they go. If you like the video, click the thumbs up button. Obviously, thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to be helpful, share this video with anyone you think might find it useful or interesting. If you really like what I do, please consider helping to support the channel via Patreon at patreon.com slash herbaderbaderb. Or follow the link in the description or on screen in this here end card. One of the benefits of becoming a patron is you get to see my videos a little bit early, so check it out. I shall return soon, so until then, happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.